What's up, everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things. Oh, this is my buddy Jonathan. Ooh. Uh, Where's the stove? Right behind you. Can you crank up the. Oh, yeah, Dad. Crank this up. What a rip. Yeah. So, we just finished riding at Loveland Ski Area, and I've never ridden here before. So, Jonathan's got a pass here, comes out a bunch. It was cool. I didn't realize that it goes over 70. Yeah, that's the cool part. That's, that's the secret part, but it's the cool <laughs> part. Like, yeah. you get over there and on a good powder day, fresh powder all day, you don't have to deal with humans. Yeah, it's cool because you can't see it from actually driving on the highway, but... We didn't take... If you go on that, like, on where the 8 is, you can come down and then you actually walk under the highway, which is pretty dope, but okay. it's a pretty rough terrain sometimes, so... Yeah. Not today. So I'm out here for the night. I think I'm going to be riding at Keystone tomorrow. So we're going to be camping somewhere up in the mountains. Jonathan's got to go home to tend to the dogs. But in the future, Jonathan has a cool profession. And him and I are probably going to be making videos together. So Top secret. <laughs> go follow him. Check out what he does. And then you'll get a very easy hint at to, <laughs> as to what we're doing. <laughs> yeah, won't take a lot of like, guesswork. I wonder what you're going to do. Cooking. Cooking. <laughs> Cooking channel. We're doing lobster too, because I want to do some, I've been like craving lobster. Lobster and Wagyu when I get back? Yeah, bro, a little <laughs> surf and turf, baby. I mean, later dude, drive later. safe. Oh man, new ski boots. This was my second day riding them this year. They need to be packed out way more than they already are. So this is the first skiing trip that I'm showing you guys here in the Kimbo. So let me give you a little rundown of how this works. Now it's probably not super recommended and I'm not gonna be the one to recommend it, but we got up here this morning and it took a while. 70 was closed because of an accident. So we only got here at like 11 o'clock. I stood in here, put my boots on and I actually turned my fireplace on and I left it on because I knew it was going to snow, which it just was as we were coming down there, it turned into like whiteout conditions. So I get back to the Kimbo and it's a cozy like 63 degrees in here. Gives me a nice place to warm up and kick my boots off. Oh, this stuff is a little bit wet. So I'm gonna grab some of my baby clothing hangers because these fit better in the Kimbo closet than like a traditional hanger. Now I can just hang that up to dry because I'm actually gonna crank up this heat a little bit. I'll do the same thing with my pants. Since I like to wear bibs, I actually fold these over on themselves. Just put the pant legs through. And now that stuff has a few hours to dry until we ride again tomorrow morning. Now, as far as some of the other gear goes, as you can see, I kick my boots off and set them right here because they're snowy. So I let them kind of drip dry here. Occasionally, if there's a lot of snow, I'll just throw it out the door that way. There's not a whole lot of condensation in here. And when it's wet like this, I'll take a paper towel, wipe it up and throw that out as well. Now for longer skis right here, I have my powder skis just leaning up in the closet area, strapped a perfect bungee around it, hooked it to itself and over here to this little basket, my pantry. This for me is one of the best ways to do it because if I'm going out to ski, I kind of load this thing up for the mission. Now there's actually an option from Kimbo for like a ski snowboard mount, which kind of mounts to the side of the Kimbo. I'll post a picture of it right here. That's kind of what it looks like when it's loaded out. The reason I didn't do that is because I of course ride ski boards, most of the time anyway. So another plus of having shorter skis is that they fit right here on the side up to the wheel well. 
You could probably fit a snowboard or skis down the side here, but the bindings might get in the way. Depends on what kind of truck you have the Kimbo on. Now the plan for tonight. It's kind of hard to camp and like stealth camp when you are around ski towns because most towns don't really allow it. A lot of ski resorts don't allow overnight parking either. Occasionally you'll find a cool resort that allows you to like stay in one reserved lot for that. Loveland is an area where they don't say you can't stay overnight, but they do not say that you can either. So back in this corner lot where I'm at right now, it looks like there are some RVs and stuff set up. I might head over there and just park for a little while, maybe cook some food, hang out, warm up a bit, and just kind of get a feel for how the lot looks when everyone starts heading out of here in probably less than an hour, about 45 minutes, this is gonna clear out. Then I'll get a read on the lot, see if other people are staying here overnight, and I'm just gonna kinda play it by ear, I guess. Guys, I decided to go for a little bit of a drive because I was hanging out there in the parking lot of Loveland and there were surprisingly not many vans or campers and it didn't look like there were many like typical vehicles that you would see in a Colorado ski area parking lot. So I hung out there for a little while and I figured might as well at least drive over the pass down into Keystone, just past A Basin, kind of see what I could find. So I have good news and bad news. The good news is I am very close to Keystone and I am in a spot that I know for sure is safe. I checked all of my usual apps like Onyx for a trail to go to. I checked some like different random boondocking apps and I couldn't find anything that would be good for tonight because we did just get a bunch of snow up here. So that kind of closes a lot of the trails and a lot of the areas around me. So the good news is I'm in my spot close to Keystone. The bad news is it is very urban, like kind of stealth camping, but you can't really be stealth camping in a truck and a camper like mine. So the plan for this evening was originally to cook up some of this elk steak, which is left over from the other night when we were out camping. But since I don't really enjoy cooking here in the camper because it creates a lot of condensation, I don't want this thing to smell like I'm cooking steak. So I don't want to cook outside on my C4 swing out because there's probably people close by that can see me. So instead, going with a good old cold cut. I mean, look at this. I even brought sea salted extra creamy butter for that steak. I have all this seasoning and stuff. I was really looking forward to the elk steak, but I'm gonna settle with this for now. I bought myself this cool new thermos from a Cabela's Bass Pro Shop while I was back on the East Coast. It's super nice. I just have water in it right now, but it keeps cold things cold with ice in it for like six days. And it keeps hot things hot for like 36 hours or something like that. Maybe I'll make some hot cocoa and pour it in here later. I need some kind of fuel for tomorrow. Actually, I also have some soup, which would be very easy to make in here without it smelling. Fat-free chicken noodle, creamy chicken noodle. Got some mini donuts for the morning. Hot and spicy chicken flavored ramen. Corn. I guess my options aren't too bad. It's no steak, but this looks awful. Not gonna lie. A little ham and turkey. All right, gas station sandwich. One bite, everyone knows the rules. Uh, ooh, this might make it better. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, I'm giving this sandwich like a 3.5. But with barbecue chips, and because I'm so hungry, I'll give it a 5.4. All right, that sandwich was worse than I thought. I didn't even finish the whole thing. So there's a good chance I'm gonna make some soup later. Maybe some ramen. Now, while I'm just sitting here hanging out, I'm gonna show you guys 
something kind of cool. You may have seen my movie theater set up in here and some of the modifications that I've done have actually made it even better. So if you haven't seen it already, this is a tiny little projector. This is a tiny little tripod for Manfrotto. Spin that on there. And previously I was kind of like setting it up here to project to a screen over on this side of the camper. And then I put it on the table. I had it here, but the basket that was here would kind of like push it off. I of course didn't want this thing falling and breaking, but now that the basket is removed, this sits here perfectly. And when I angle it properly, it's like the perfect distance and perfect kind of angle for the screen. Previously, I was keeping the screen under here. It's just like a piece of poster board that you get at a craft store, but it was getting a little dented. So I've now moved it under the mattress because it's flat. So why not pull out the screen, can slide it into place. And now movies. Oh, it's dead. I guess I got to charge it. So another cool thing about this projector being here is that you can actually plug it in and charge it while you're using it. So you could almost reach it to the standard power unit. But since I have a ton of power right here, you can just plug it into that. And now it's charging and it's back up and working. Man, I had to turn that heater down. It's getting warm in here. It's 75 degrees in here. It's going down to a low of nine degrees tonight, real feel which is up here in the mountains, in this valley. So it's gonna be pretty cold, but when we were back on the East Coast around the holidays, we actually stayed out here in the Kimbo when it was a real feel of negative 17 degrees Fahrenheit, which was nuts. That was the coldest it has ever been outside while I stayed and slept inside of the Kimbo. And it was toasty warm in here. Another thing to note, I'm at about 9,200 and some feet in elevation. A lot of people ask about the Dickinson heater working in high elevation. It works great. I had that thing running when I was coming from the other ski resort and we were up over 12,000 feet, I believe. And it ran the whole time. It functions. It's super warm. It's not like a diesel heater where sometimes those will struggle with higher altitudes. So it works great. So I'm going to hang here for a bit, watch some Netflix, and relax for a little, and hopefully we will be in for a peaceful night tonight. There's a really good chance that I'm going to make food here in a couple minutes. Guess who passed out last night and didn't eat any more food? Didn't get any work done. I didn't even really watch a movie. So it is about eight o'clock in the morning now and I slept pretty, pretty good last night. I was obviously very tired because I just completely fell asleep with the lights on. I actually set my alarm this morning for 6 a.m. When the alarm went off, I woke up, remote started the truck just so I was kind of getting out of that camping spot early. And I made my way over to the parking lot at Keystone and now, we are gonna get ready to ski again.
another successful day. My action camera died because it was very cold out there. Windy, snowing, and then the storms kind of blew over. So that was a solid two days. I think I'm gonna take a rest day tomorrow and then possibly ride at Vail on Thursday, but we'll see. If that happens, there's a good chance you guys will see a video. Oh, and hopefully we get some more snow here. That way it actually feels like a proper Colorado winter. So that's gonna be all for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, I'd appreciate it. If you left a like, leave a comment, share this video with your family and friends. And if you're new here, consider clicking subscribe because I make new videos every week. As always, thank you for watching. I'll talk to you in the next one.